Yo, Need Nation, what's up? Stoked to see uh, quite a few people here in the waiting room here on YouTube. 27 people or so. I think we're just waiting for me to turn on, and that is pretty cool. Got a few things on the agenda today. You know, we got that Rare Breed Rye Bottle Pop. That is going to be pretty sick. Um, also going to give you guys a tour of my bar as best as I can. When we get to that part of our hangout today, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to move uh, broadcast over to my phone and then just kind of walk around my den here and show you guys what I got rolling and we'll go through some of my bottles. It would take probably a few hours for me to talk to you about all that I have going on. So we're going to try and avoid boring you with that. But I uh, do just want to leave plenty of time to chat it up. Um, if you want to get down in the chat and ask questions, that would be swell. I'll try and get to as many questions as we have today. I really just want these times on YouTube to be um, whiskey hangs. You know, it's Thursday night, I think. <laughs> it's been a long week at work. Um, but I just want to be able to take some time together and hang out. That's really all I ever wanted the Drew P. Whiskey channel to be. I didn't want to get overly technical in my reviews. Um, you know, I don't even really want to do that many reviews, but I do want to just share whiskey with people. And so far it's been, let me just say, amazing. Like I've really enjoyed um, getting to know some of you guys. I've had a lot of people reach out to me on Instagram, in my DMs, showing me what kind of bottles you found. And that's just cool. I love to share um, this kind of stuff with you guys. So thank you so much for supporting the channel through just watching, through sharing the videos, through liking, subscribing, you know, the whole YouTube thing. Uh, it's I've been blown away. You know, I never expected so many people to like what I was laying down at this level. And I'm just stoked for the future. Like my stoke level is pretty dang high right now. But what you guys got going on? I'm, I'm drinking a little warm up here. I figured if I was going to start with, uh, or if I was going to do a rare breed rye bottle pop, I needed to start in the wild turkey family. Um, so I have got the, uh, I put it away already, that uh, Kentucky Spirit uh, single barrel behind me. It's really good. It's doing it for me tonight. Mm, mm hmm. Uh, Austin Feltz, Wisconsin Strong. Yes, yes. I am in Milwaukee, for those of you who do not know. I uh, love Milwaukee. It is difficult in the winter, though. I grew up in Texas, Wichita Falls, Texas, where it's hot all the time. I mean, you, <laughs> Christmas Day can be 90 degrees, and it's not that way in Milwaukee. All right. It's going to be a little free form tonight. Again, the most exciting part, I think, well, you tell me, are you most looking forward to the rare breed thoughts? Or are you most looking forward to the bar tour? I think I mentioned uh, in, maybe it was one of my Instagram live feeds, that's going to be kind of like an episode of Cribs. And I'd love to do a series of videos just touring the different uh, bourbon or whiskey YouTubers and tour their bars. Um I may do that at some point. It's a good idea. I'm going to write it down, and I may just have to partner up with a lot of, a lot of the bourbon squad and get you guys some pretty rad bar content. It, uh, I mentioned it's been a busy week. I'll just, like, we'll, we'll get into this thing, giving you guys an update of what's going on in the Droopy Whiskey world. Well, I mean, whiskey is a very small part of what I do on a daily basis. Um, my wife is getting more pregnant each day, so we are looking forward to welcoming our third child in March. Uh, so she's had some appointments, which kind of pushed my work back this week and was a little choppy, but everything's going great so far. She's healthy, baby's healthy, so we are just jazzed, um, you know, getting ready for that. <laughs> I've got plenty of bourbon uh, for it, and I think I'm going to pop one of the Four Roses bottles I have up there. Uh, when the big day comes, March 15th is her due date. Um, yes, um, Sean Murphy. Dang, dude, you have a big audience here. Congrats. Yeah, 60 people watching. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining. Again, hopefully it's uh, it's worth your time. Um, I'll try and get to the questions. I'll tell you what I'm going to do with the questions here in a little bit. But anyway, life's going good. Um, it's the busy season at Stone Creek Coffee, and that's my job. That's my day job. I'm a director of operations at a coffee roasting company out of Milwaukee, which is awesome. Like one of these days I'll do a live stream where we just talk about coffee because <laughs> it's, it is so much fun. I got to tell you guys, but it, it's a small business and that comes with all kinds of challenges and 
the holidays are just one of those challenges. People love to buy coffee for Christmas gifts, which is dope. Like, I'm super stoked about that. It's an important season for us. Um, but it's a busy season for us. Um, yeah. And that, you know, it's good. But, um, surprise for you guys, I did get a coupon code uh, specifically for um, Drew P. Whiskey followers. So, I, did, I think I put it down in the description on the video. Let me check here. Uh, yeah, go over to stonecreekcoffee.com. You guys will get 15% off if you use the code Droopy Whiskey. So you're welcome. And there's always free shipping at stonecreekcoffee.com too. We do uh, UPS ground, uh, carbon neutral shipping, and so you're going to get free shipping on all your orders if you use that Droopy Whiskey code. And we know coffee. I mean, I know whiskey, but I really know coffee because that's what I've done now. Uh, for a living for I think eight years I've been in the coffee industry so that's going well um, but you know I love to get to the evenings and pour something awesome and I've really been enjoying again making the videos going live on Instagram if you guys don't follow me jump over to Instagram and follow Drew P Whiskey over there because you know once or twice throughout the week I'll just come down to the bar and turn on Instagram live and we'll just chat for a little bit I'll continue to try and do one of these live streams once a week, and I may be bringing other people on with me in the future. Um, but these will be more formal where we have an agenda. I still want to get to questions. You know, that's a big part of what I want to do. But um, I'll have more of an agenda here where those uh, Instagram lives will just be bonus content. So look forward to that. Check those out. That'll be rad. All right, before we get into things, uh, yeah, if you guys have questions for me specifically, please tag me because then I'll see it a little bit easier. You guys chat it up, have a good time. It'll be pretty awesome. Uh, but if you want me to see it, tag me. And then another thing that would be pretty cool, if you guys want to support the channel, no pressure at all. Please don't feel pressure because this is just for fun and it's because I enjoy it. But if you want to, there's a couple ways you can do that. First way is um, the super chat feature down at the bottom of the live chat. There's a little dollar sign button there. And if you want to buy me a drink by dropping a super chat, that'd be great. Uh, you don't have to do that at all. Again, don't feel any pressure. But I will definitely make sure if you guys drop super chat questions that I address those. We'll talk about those um, for sure. That would be cool. Um, the other way you can support the channel is... Well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'll tease that. We're going to get to the, the shirt release in, in just a little bit. Um, but this, again, is the, the mock-up of what I've done. I'll tell you guys how you can get that here in just a little bit. Whew. You know, when you're doing this just yourself and talking to you guys um, who aren't necessarily talking back verbally, you got to, like, remember to breathe. Um, so I will pause periodically and just give me grace. I, I appreciate that. All right, let me hit the tags at least here as we go. Is that Wild Turkey Masters Keep behind you open? No, but we'll probably do some bottle pop videos in the future. I've got two of the Decades Batch 1, so I definitely need to pop that. And then I've got the Cornstone Rye, so very, very stoked for those. If you wonder why I have so many unopened bottles, um, you should go check out my video. What do you do, or what should you do with your bourbon or your whiskey? Anyway, I, I think that video is important because it kind of shows that there are different ways of approaching collecting whiskey. And for me, I just got into this YouTube thing, and so it was just me collecting as a hobby and drinking as a hobby. And there are a couple reasons why I don't have, like, all my bottles open. Given the fact that the YouTube channel is doing well and you guys are enjoying the content, that I'm likely to open a lot more bottles, specifically for, like, the entertainment purpose of trying something new and telling you guys about what I'm doing. Um... But I think there's a good reason not to open all your bottles, too. Actually, a few good reasons. Uh, Droopy Whiskey, make Trev a wrench. It's only right. I do not know what that means. Will Henderson, you're going to have to explain yourself, man. I may have said something inappropriate. <laughs> I honestly have no idea what that means. All right. Um, Tim Evans, Super Chat, keep up the great work. Tim, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Uh, my bourbon journey in the chat. Scott, a uh, fellow Wisconsinite, dropping uh, bourbon review bid, vids, uh, bourbon rye. Even did a Scotch one recently. So check out Scott's channel if you haven't. Scott, thanks for dropping by, dude. We still have to do something together at some point here in the near future. Uh, 
Rod, can you do a vid on the arrow press reversed technique? Um, yeah, but, so I'll tease something on Stone Creek. We're going to start doing a lot more um, video content through Stone Creek Coffee. So if you like whiskey stuff, keep following Droopy Whiskey. If you like coffee stuff, jump over to the Stone Creek Coffee YouTube channel and follow that because you're going to get a lot of cool coffee content soon. It, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for me to do reversed AeroPress brewing methods on this channel, as fun as that would be. Um, so just stay tuned for stuff come, like that coming out of Stone Creek Coffee. Uh, BD, Droopy Whiskey, if you had to choose one BTAC bottle, what would it be and why? You know, I love the Weller line, so William LaRue Weller would be at the top of my list. Second second would be Stag, which I do have one of. It's the 2019, which people kind of crap on because it's a low proof. But I actually like a lower proof, barrel proof. Um, so I'm excited to open that uh, in the near future. Eagle Rare 17 also appeals. But I tried Handy once, loved that. I heard Saz 18 has not been so good until this year. I heard this year's edition was a lot better, but I've never had the pleasure of trying that. So I just named all of them. But top of the list, uh, W.L. Weller. Second would be Stag. Cameron. Oh, man, this feed is a little jumpy. Let me know if you guys have any problem with audio or video. I came down here. I've been just, like, making sure everything's ready for the last couple hours. But if you have, guys have any issues, let me know what's up. Uh, I mean people who are making bourbon drinks through an AeroPress with coffee. Making bourbon drinks through an AeroPress with coffee. That sounds interesting. I'll have to check that out. You have to send me some links, Cameron, on what's going on there. A wrench is a mod. He will help you out. Trev, dude. Yeah, well, you know what? I could probably use some mod help. That would be great. But you know what? This is the first one, so if it's a little choppy, that's okay. You guys can bust my chops if you must, but... Just click on Trev Wilson logo and make him a moderator. I don't even know Trev. <laughs> I assume you guys uh, know him because you're talking him up. I trust Scott, so I should probably trust Trev. Add moderate. All right, Trev, I'm putting my life in your hands here, boss. All right, it's done. Jonathan Finkel. Hi, Droopy. Hi. That was my nickname. Actually started in middle school. Uh, my last name is Pond, like the body of water. So Droopy, Droopy. And it, it kind of stuck. So I updated all my social media handles a while back and just kept it. So I've got Droopy Stone Creek. That's my professional one. Droopy Family. That's my family one. If you guys go follow me there, I probably won't <laughs> like let you watch. Unless we know each other personally. It's pictures of my kids. And then this one, Droopy Whiskey, which is like, hey, let's get to know each other. Let's have a good time around bourbon. All right. So again, um, you know, if you guys want to make sure that I see your question, uh, just throw it in the super chat. Again, I appreciate the support. Um, otherwise, let's uh, let's get into it. Uh, first, I've got this Kentucky Spirit, which I mentioned in my Thanksgiving, like the seven bourbons you need for a perfect Thanksgiving video. It's really good, like that that just over hundred proof point one hundred one. It just works. It's not as funky as some of the other Wild Turkey, like the Wild Turkey 101. I like Wild Turkey 101, but it doesn't floor me. It's not my favorite. Um, it's not my favorite budget bourbon. It'll work. I'll do it in a pinch, but Kentucky Spirit is just refined, and it's got nice age on it. All right. Before we get into the rare breed rye, I'm going to slam this in a minute so we can pour some rye in a fresh glass and get uh, to the agenda that you guys came here for uh, a couple couple things um you know a little bit about droopy whiskey and what i want this to be is uh in the chat you know we're here to have a good time but i would ask like let's keep the profanity down i really want this channel to be a place where people can come and they like anybody feels like they can be here like one of my favorite youtube peeps is a guy named Eric Anders Lang. He does golf videos, and he's he's got this great ethos of everyone is welcome, and uh, and that's what I want Droopy Whiskey to be about. Like I, I think we can hold opinions, we can talk, we can discuss, but like I don't want to be overly negative, I don't want to be overly judgmental, and I don't want to be overly crass. Like let's have a dang good time for sure, 
But uh, again, I want anybody to be able to watch these videos. And if my son or my daughter watches them, I want them to be like, oh, yeah, no, it's cool. Dad loves whiskey. He handles it responsibly. And, you know, they could watch it and I wouldn't be embarrassed. So that's really my vision for it. Again, have a good time, but manage yourselves accordingly in the chat. I appreciate that. So be respectful, be positive. Uh, yeah, and that's it. That's the, that's the goal for sure. Uh, all right, Super Chat. Patrick, that clock broke my brain for a few videos. Will you be doing a top whiskeys of the year or your top whiskeys? I, I will be doing some categorized top whiskeys, like top five beginner bourbons, beginner rise, like my favorite all time that I've had. Um, I can't really break it down to like my favorite this year. And I really don't really like talking about favorites in general because it's so hard for me to be like, oh yeah, this was my favorite. But I can tell you like the whiskeys that I've tried that have been the most impactful for me that like blew me away. So we'll definitely be dropping some of those for sure. Uh, Tommy D, how much of a golfer are you? Tommy, I absolutely love golf. Um, am I amazing at golf? No. Um, you know, my handicap's probably a 10 to 12. I don't really track it. Um, I really got into it just about a year and a half ago. So I took some lessons this year. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a nice way for me to be super chill. So I definitely enjoy getting out as much as possible. And I golf probably once a week this year. That was the most I've ever gone. Um, and, uh, would definitely keep that up, but baby next year is going to make it a little bit difficult. So I did let my wife know I don't plan to get out as much this coming year. Keith Schmidt, what unicorns have you been chasing this year that you haven't been able to find within your normal budget? Um, you know, my whiskey budget is probably larger than it should be given my personal net income. Uh, I would love to find a 2020 George Stagg or, uh, Weller. I was able to get the 20 Four Roses, which, you know, the Four Roses LE is always, you know, up there with some of the BTAC in terms of my unicorns. But there's always a lot of stuff on my list. Um, you know, I haven't gotten any Stag Jr. this year. I'm down to my last bottle of that. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much any unicorn, I'm like, I'd love to try and score. So, again, favorites is difficult for me. But if you had to say, if you could pick one bottle you wanted this year that you don't have, it'd be a Weller. I, you know, the WL Weller, I've never had one. So would love to score one of those guys. Uh, Tom Lynch, we have very different ideas on profanity. My daughter's cursed like sailors. Uh, it's, we should talk about profanity at some point. Uh, it's a very interesting deal because it's, I, w I wouldn't view it as like necessarily an explicitly moral issue in certain cases. So some people would put a high level of morality on it. But at the same time, it's like, let's just be safe. <laughs> That's kind of where I come down. Because I don't want to cause offense. You know, we're here to have a good time again. So I don't want to be offensive. That's really what it comes down to right now. Droopy Whiskey, if things change, I should be seeing my brother up in Sheboygan area next year. Always looking for golfers. Yeah, let's do it. Let's meet up. Let's uh, roll the rock, as they say. Uh, good spots on golfing. Yeah, I go to uh, Oakwood. I live in Oak Creek, so Oakwood, uh, south side of Milwaukee. We won't get too into golf here. Uh, lots of good call courses around uh, Milwaukee for sure, though. Um, very expensive, some of them. Favorite tasting notes that you want in a bourbon? I like a decent amount of oak. Um, I like some roasted almonds, like roasted uh, pecans. But then I want a little bit of spice, um, whether that's through the wheat or through the rye. Most of the time it comes in rye. Like I love MGP stuff because I get a lot of like buttery, butterscotch, um, dark caramel, and then um, I get some rye in there. So uh, I generally prefer a higher rye bourbon. Um, I can go for wheat in a mood. Favorites, again, are tough because it depends totally on my mood. I'm a very moody person. Very moody. All right, let's slam this turkey. You guys are dropping questions. That's great. Again, I probably won't get to all of them unless they're in the super chat. Um, but we're going to go as long as this takes, as long as you guys are straight chilling. I appreciate the patience. Um, or until I have to go to the bathroom, in which case we can all take a break and you can fill your glasses and then I'll come back and we'll finish our agenda. Man, yeah, that Kentucky spirit is good. That's not even a store pick. Like some of the store picks I've heard are fantastic. All right, y'all, let's, uh, let's bottle pop this. 
So here we go. Rare Breed Rye, the one and only batch so far. 112.2 proof, uh, according to the peeps over there at Turkey. It's supposed to be a blend of four, six, and eight years, as reported by uh, the wild turkey expert, uh, Rare Breed, Rare Bird 101. Dave something, I forget Dave's last name, but Dave is the absolute wild turkey diehard. That guy knows turkey like nobody's business. So if you guys like wild turkey, you should go follow on Instagram, Rare Bird 101. And Dave's got a whole blog and a book uh, called American Spirit, I think. That's a, completely about wild turkey. I haven't read the book yet. I want to, probably over Christmas. Um, that was probably the lamest bottle pop sound I have ever had. <laughs> I was I was even gearing up for it here, and it just came sliding right out. So, uh, yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, as long as it holds whiskey, I guess it doesn't matter that much. Uh, so, yeah. Dave over at Rare Bird 101 said, hey, we're, uh, we're looking at four, six, and eight years here. And uh, it kind of looks that way. It's not the darkest rye I've ever seen. I love a well-aged rye, though. All right. I'm excited for this one. As soon as I saw it was being released, I love the rare breed. I really wanted to try this. Uh, one of the things, I always cut the, this out of my videos, but when I taste whiskey, if I'm tasting it, I chew like crazy. Like, <laughs> So I'll show you, not that I'm performing or anything but it's almost embarrassing which is why I cut it out of my videos but I feel like I gotta get the whiskey all up in my grill you gotta taste it it's gotta hit the retro nasal and I gotta be like okay it has hit every single part of my mouth my mouth has been totally defiled by this whiskey now I'm, I look super self-conscious right now guys Uh, Lone Wanderer says, do you find yourself nosing other drinks and food too? I do with coffee and tea. So, I mean, coffee is my profession, so I sniff the living crap out of coffee, no doubt. And I've always enjoyed smelling food. Um, you know, the olfactory senses are such a huge part of what we taste that if you're not smelling real good, you're not tasting real good. So keep those pipes cleared. And if you've got like a septum problem, it's probably worth seeing an ENT uh, doctor if you want to get the most out of your whiskey like just make sure that you can smell because if you can't smell you can't taste nothing wrong with the Kentucky chew thanks Sean appreciate that Cameron you have to own it just like James Hoffman and his cupping slurps yeah I mean everybody in coffee like that's how you get the stuff on your palate and I'll kind of do it with whiskey as I still sip kind of aggressively but occasionally I'll sip too hard and it'll hit the back and oh man that is the most painful thing you should not slurp your whiskey that is just dangerous at the same time i'm still trying to get that that spraying of flavor particles all over my palate that's how you taste fluid best unless you're talking about barrel proof whiskey not much as not as much on the nose as i'd expect super citrus forward sweeter but kind of plain. Doesn't smell too young, though. I don't get, like, heavy grain ethanol. Just pretty chill. Kind of nice. Um, very similar to the Wild Turkey 101 ride. Just more intense. Um, the citrus definitely carries forward. Very citrus forward rye the mint is, is is there's a suggestion of mint and oak there but you can definitely tell it's not super aged like it's not an ultra aged product but it's a is a big big kentucky rye and the corn uh influence being that it's only 51 percent rye in the mash bill is certainly evident um and i think it's like i think it's good uh, if you like uh 101 rye which i do i actually like 101 rye better than i like 101 bourbon uh, it's worth getting. Uh, it's probably not worth paying secondary for, in my opinion, but it's really solid. Like, I'm I'm totally happy with this bottle. And that Kentucky spirit's grown on me. This may grow on me as well. Who knows? 
I mean, I've got a decent amount left here, so. It's really sweet with that lemon. Like, it's candied lemon. And then it hits you with a little... A little parsley. Like, you get sort of some fresh greens there. And then it kind of finishes up with, uh, like, black pepper. That's as technical as I'll get. Really solid rye. Um, I, I bet it would do better in a wide mouth glass, too. You guys know, if you watch my videos, the Glen Cairn, well, it's fine... I prefer something like this. Just feel like this is the way that whiskey was meant to be drunk. So you know what? Screw the Glen Cairn for now. We'll top this off with a little bit extra because we're going to be here a while. Dang it. That was not enough. But I actually do want to taste one other thing before we sign off here. Um, some of you squad have been amazing and sent me some samples. And I even somebody sent me a whole bottle, which is... That's really cool, you guys. Thank you. Um, and if you do send me stuff, uh, I will either feature it here on one of my YouTube lives or I'll feature it on an Instagram live where I just do, hey, here's mail call. Droopy Whiskey mail call. Here's what I got and let's taste it and talk about it. So I have one other rye we'll wrap up the night with, which is kind of an interesting craft distillery, which I didn't read too much about. But uh, Rare Breed Rye overall verdict is uh, pretty good. Uh, 3.25 out of 5. I don't have a scoring tier, but that's what we're going to call it right now. Yeah, I think this does help. It kind of it chills it out a little bit more. It lets that sweetness play. Mellows this, like, it's like a sharp citrus. Almost like lemongrass. Like, the, I think citrus and herbal, you know, it's like the lemongrass toppings on, on uh, Asian food. Like pad thai, you know. Get some bean sprouts in there a little bit. How far can we take this? I'll keep pulling out notes as we go, no doubt. All right, let's get some questions here. And uh, while I sip this thing, and then we're going to do a, do the bar tour. Which, I mean, I'm really thankful to whoever built this bar because I inherited something pretty dang cool. But <laughs> I'll show you guys the posture in which I hold is... A little less than comfortable. So the two and a half hours I did with Bourbon Junkies is probably about as long as I could sit here and not lose total circulation in my legs. Uh, whiskey is made to be drunk straight from the bottle on occasion. On occasion. Uh, t -t 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 beer drinker? I will occasionally drink beer. One of the things I mentioned with somebody, I, I keep, I just assume you guys have all seen all of my videos I, that's probably not true um but i i have a bit of a delicate digestive disposition i actually had abdominal surgery when i was nine months old they thought i had like a tumor maybe cancer no i did not doctors kind of screwed up though i developed an abscess had part of my intestine removed i've had a weak stomach ever since so beer makes me crazy blo it makes everybody bloated it makes me crazy bloated it messes me up for like days i love beer i wish i could drink more of it but it's just not doesn't really agree with me too much. Whiskey, on the other hand, I feel like I could drink a lot of whiskey <laughs> and not experience that kind of... And I think it's really the like sugar and caloric like totality of beer and volume, too, that makes it a little bit tough. Like, I'm a relatively thin dude, and it's not because I've been super disciplined my whole life, although I'm, you know, I'm in pretty good shape right now. Um, it's that I just can't eat or drink too much because I will literally vomit. Sorry. Uh, what tasting notes don't you like? Well, Drew, Drew Lester asked that. Drew, I uh, I like most things, dude. Um, it's really a combination of stuff. Uh, there are mouthfeels I don't like. Like I mentioned it with the bourbon junkies that I don't like drying oak. I don't like that mouth sensation. But I try to be open to a lot of things. Um, whiskey Fellow, in Wisconsin, he's a whiskey reviewer in Wisconsin, and his whole shtick is drink curious. And I love that because, you know, you sort of approach every bottle or sample with like, hey, let's see how it is. Like this weird craft distillery with this bizarre barrel finish may be amazing. And we're going to let it kind of stand on its own and assess it for what it is, not assessing it against George T. Stagg. You know, let's just take this one whiskey we're dealing with today and decide, is this a unique or pleasurable experience? That's how I prefer to, like, approach food, coffee, whiskey, is I don't want to bring this heavy, like, judgment of what I think it should be. Just, like, let it react with my face and be like, oh, 
that's either something I like or something I don't like. Now, I definitely think that whiskey can be quantifiably good or quantifiably bad um, based on the general perception of what whiskey should be. So in the same way that coffee is that way. Like, we quality-grade coffee. Um, but uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be done that way. Keeps their own. Sean Murphy, do you factor price into the review? Example, this is good, but not $50 good all the time. Yeah, no doubt. Um, there's not another... So it depends on what the product is, though, because there's not a lot of really high-quality barrel-proof rise. So whereas if this was a bourbon, uh, you know, if Rare Breed Bourbon was $70, I think I paid 65 for this, I'd be like, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's still really good. Um because there's not a good alternative to this, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. And that's why I would buy it again at the retail price is, uh, you know, I'll drink this bottle to a quarter. And then if I find another one, I will probably purchase it. Will I hoard this? No, it's not hoardable good. Um, but it's keep a bottle around good. If it was $120, I'd be like, no, I'm not going to buy it again. Uh, Lakefront is good from Tommy D, Lakefront Brewery. Uh, I enjoy some Lakefront beers. Third Space, uh, they're down the road from us, down the road from Stone Creek, so just off St. Paul in downtown Milwaukee, Third Space Brewery. Very small, well, smaller brewery compared to Lakefront, but uh, got some friends over there and really like their stuff. So if you're in Milwaukee area, check out Third Space. The Lakefront is great too. No, no hate on Lakefront, for sure. They are the, the Milwaukee craft staple. I mean, if it's not for Lakefront, there's it's like there's no third space so we got to give them props how would you rate rare breed rye versus pikesville well i don't want to drink myself under the table here um hold on one sec i'll answer the question and then i think somebody just sent me a request for whiskey feedback <laughs> yeah totally so a friend of mine just texted me a bottle of Evan Williams single barrel. And he said, how does this stack up as a $20 gift? Well, what do you guys think? How does Evan Williams single barrel stack up as a $20 gift? Now, my opinion is, is the dang perfect gift. Perfect $20 gift. So that's what I'm going to say. The perfect $20 gift. Nice job. Um, yeah, I assume you guys agree with me, obviously. So Pikesville versus Rare Breed. Depends on what you want in a rye. I want a rye that's more rye forward. And I want a rye that's not super drying. Um, I like the Rare Breed rye better, actually, than the Pikesville. Pikesville tastes older, but it's not as rye forward. It could easily pass for a bourbon. And I don't, I don't particularly like that. Um, it's good. Like, I keep coming back to it. I got a bottle open, and I'll drink it till it's gone. I've been through one other bottle. And uh, if somebody gives me a bottle, totally drinking it. I think it's a good gift. The six-year age statement is nice. The 110 proof is nice. But I think I prefer the rare breed. Uh, Lakefront. Oh, Tommy D about Lakefront's tour. Yeah, Lakefront Brewery's tour is the best beer tour I've ever been on. And they give you a lot of beer. A lot. Do you have a pic of what your bar looked like on in its NASCAR era? No, Rod, I should have, uh, I should have had a video or a picture or a video because it was crazy. Like I grew up in the South Texas, I mentioned, but I was never much of a NASCAR fan. But this dude, he was a NASCAR fan. Like I'm pretty sure there's still like a Dale Earnhardt, like the old, the dead Dale Earnhardt, like a rug in my garage from this guy. So the, on each of these tempered glass shelves, there was cars and there were like posters up in the basement here of all kinds of nascar vehicles and i know a decent amount of nascar people again just from growing up in the south uh i always liked the look of jeff gordon's car you know and he seemed a little bit more like cool until he spoke at least <laughs> than dale earnhardt but now that i'm like an adult dale earnhardt's mustache is second to none you know that's uh burt reynolds style uh, mustache so i think i'm team earnhardt now that i'm fully grown since I turned into a man, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, NASCAR is a, a funny deal. Um, super dangerous. Like I, I think I would struggle to get behind the wheel of one of those cars. No doubt. 
All right, uh, let's do one other question and then we're going to go ahead and move to the bar tour. Peter White, have you had the barrel rye 13, 14 single, 13 or 14 year single barrels, usually store picks? No, that would be fantastic. I assume they're getting that out of Alberta or um, MGP. Well, MGP rye of that age would cost like a billion dollars. So I have not um, had that. That sounds pretty good. I like barrel stuff. I'm a big fan of the Barrel Craft Spirits brand. I think they do some pretty cool stuff, getting whiskey from all over everywhere and making it into delicious products for sure. All right, give me a second here because I'm going to just switch over to my phone. And I should be able to do this. The I use the StreamYard app here. All right. Bear with me. Okay. You should be able to hear me through my phone. Um, somebody give me comment confirmation. Oh, man. I'll show you why that was so painful in a second. Give me comment confirmation that you can hear me right now. Somebody comment if you can hear me. Yeah, cool. Dope. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. All right. So, this is my setup here. And that is my chair that I sit in in every video. So, I literally sit. Like, I want you to see the space. I straddle this refrigerator. And, you know, I'm working on my flexibility, but it's still not easy. Um, so, yeah, that's my setup. These mats were here, Crown and Jack. I don't drink either one of those except for the occasional jack wash on Thanksgiving, as you guys know. Um, but I'm thankful for the stuff this dude left. Uh, let me give you the the bar view here. These uh, stairs coming down, and then you land in the, in the area. So it's a solid oak bar, and they left these stools for me when I moved into the house, and I was like, I'm going to put this bar to real good use. It's going to be awesome. So this is the view of the setup. Normally I'll put a camera kind of back here when I do my recorded videos, but this setup works really nice. Like this webcam setup I got for these streams. And then boom, there you go. Um, this is a nice area to, you know, sometimes I'll work out. I got a different workout area, but if I want to watch TV, when I hit those 35 pound dumbbells, <laughs> uh, I did shoot that one. Um, this one I bought at a garage sale. Those two I shot, um, Texas style, you guys know. All right, let's get into the bourbons here. The man, it's mostly bourbon and the way that this whole thing is constructed. Uh, all these cabinets down here are empty to this point. My sister who's living with us has taken over this and dropped a bunch of soda and the fridge is full of soda, not beer right now because she lives in that room over there. And, uh, I've got a lot of crap down here. Empty bottles, that wine I used to finish the ride the other day in that video, and then a bunch of trash, and then an old Queen 8-track tape, which is pretty dope, pretty dope. And then I mentioned all these are empty, but I keep my glassware down here, and then a few other spirits. Uh, this tequila is fine for Margs. Got some gin, some this mezcal, this Bozcal mezcal, so good. Really good. Friend gave me this um, cognac. Yeah, it's okay. It's cheap cognac. And then this is kind of a mixer mezcal, which is pretty good for 20 bucks. This one I got for 20 bucks too because it was on sale. It should not have been $20. But yeah, let's walk through the bourbons here. And I'm not going to be able to see any questions for a while, so I'll try and get back to them. But again, if you guys want to support, uh, anything just hit me with a super chat and then I'll get to those super chats when I get back here. Got some master's keeps batch ones on the decades and then the cornerstone. Um, like to keep a bookers around and most guys, most of these I picked up on the shelf. Like I'm not a huge fan of secondary. I'll try and trade periodically, but, um, you know, it's technically not legal. So it makes me nervous, <laughs> honestly. So, yeah, I was stoked to get this Knob Creek 12. I heard really good things about that. 
um elijah craig 18 i'll pop that next time i want something really sweet and oaky but i've got these toasted barrels i've actually got quite a few of these um which is a pretty good substitute for the 18 actually and then i've got these gems which i did work through trades because i got into bourbon just a little too late this was the last one of the last heaven hills i bought um and then i yeah i bought it for a friend on my last kentucky trip and then uh, he traded it back to me. So the four roses and then the stag, these two were in a trade I did. I gave away the Booker's 30th um, for these two. So some people might think I'm crazy, but I know that I'll probably like these better. And it was two for one. So I've been fortunate to come across some old scouts. I love the old, old scouts. You know, these this is a 10 year, 12 year, and then the 10 year hunter proof really glad to have those then all these were shelf finds the mictors uh rye products bomb burgers love them all uh the first bomb burgers i had was just like oh man if i ever see that again I'm getting it again and it's you know these are the first time i bought bomb burgers it was 60 this one i think was 80 but you know i think this is probably undervalued on secondary because it's so good and then following the MGP stuff, I got the two Bell Meads, um, single barrel 12. This one's really low proof, 50.6% alcohol by volume. And then this one, nine year. Got one stack junior left, Weller 12, and then a Blanton's barrel pick. So last ones on all of those. Not easy to come by at all in Wisconsin, let alone anywhere. Couple 107s, which I absolutely love. Those standard Eagle Rare, some Eagle Rare picks, straight rye. Uh, it was a good year for me on 1792 with a 12 and then a couple of sweet wheats. So looking forward to cracking those soon. And then standard, you know, standard stuff. Love the Remus MGP. I uh, clearly I'm an MGP fan <laughs> between the smooth ambler between the bell meads and then the remus stuff and the the bell mead reserve but then i also love heaven hill got a few henry mckenna's those are now hard to find unfortunately some elijah craig barrel proofs batch c 920 super good and then occasionally and we talked about this on bourbon junkies but i get in the mood for that dickel 11 year bottle and bond it hits a spot for me when i want it not always but i think it's good for uh for certain moods and then four rows and single barrels. I love these things. And so I normally have one of these open at a time, but I currently have this open, the uh, Bullet Blender Select, which is almost certainly four rows is sourced. Um, and I don't know, like it tastes so much like one of these guys. So I was like, I'm just going to drink this one right now <laughs> because it's really, really good and tastes like barrel proof four roses stuff. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, I mentioned the Kentucky Spirit Old Tub again, a mood whiskey for me. Some people hate this, some people love it. Uh, it's a mood whiskey. If you want something really nutty and kind of funky and really viscous and hunter proof, it works well. This, you know, $15 Heaven Hill Maze Balls, uh, for 15 bucks. And then I just got you know my two Mondo Elijah Craig Pirate Bottles. I mentioned a little extra toasted barrel back there. And then uh, this has been discontinued, but it's the Nicholson Bottled and Bond from Lux Co. Now Lux Row. I don't know why they changed it. And that is my grandpa. My grandpa Gib slash Gilbert. He was in the Airborne. I forget which division. Uh, he passed away when I was 12. But really cool picture. So I like to keep that on my bar. My dad is also a vet. So that is my bar squad. That is the tour. Um, for somebody who makes bourbon videos, I don't have as many things as other people, but I like what I have. Oh, I got the entire Far Side collection over there, gift from my parents last year. If you guys have not read Far Side comics, oh, they're amazing. Oh, um, found this bottle pretty much empty and overly oxidized uh, on a hunting trip in the liquor cabinet and so i kept the bottle the whiskey was not very good <laughs> um i wish it would have been full and not oxidized and then this was the first like real unicorn i found um and i drank it last year with my dad and 
my younger brother just enjoyed it around my 30th birthday. All right, so now I'm going to get back here. We're going to do a little inception mode. Got it. Cool. No problem. I'm going to add myself back to the stream. I'm going to remove this. Well, I hope all that was, or that was all it was cracked up to be. If it turns out that I like tuned out that whole time, um, and you guys didn't hear a word of that, I'm gonna apologize. <laughs> but it looks like you guys uh, were tracking along. All right, let's get to the super chat questions, and then if you guys have anything else you want to hit me, we'll do that. All right, what logo do you have on your vice golf ball? Oh, great question. Yeah, I didn't talk about my golf balls, but I did get some custom printed Vice golf balls. This is from Stone Creek, actually. One of the things we say all the time as a company is never stop learning. And I've really adopted that as a life motto as well. So it's a head with a lot of stuff going into it. Hopefully that'll, you can see that. But uh, I just think it's great. You know, the idea is that, listen, we fail all the freaking time. Like we as human beings are just, we struggle. <laughs> you know, we, we try and get by as best we can. But the deal is not so much like, did you succeed in the moment? It's like, did you learn from your experience? So, and an example would be in, in these whiskey videos is that, you know, I produced actually some whiskey videos a couple of years ago, more parody, more comedy stuff, because I love to have a good time, but they sucked. <laughs> the production value wasn't as good and they didn't get very many views. I was like, well, that's interesting. You know, I might revisit that in the future and then, you know, when I got this bar and, you know, I got a little bit more time on my hands, I was like, let's, let's do it again. And let's like, just do something that you believe in and, you know, put, put some effort and some heart into it. And, you know, you guys have responded so well. And so I'm just really thankful for that. But I just changed. I upped the production value. I, I decided to say something instead of just like make fun of things. And you got, you all have responded well, and I think that just showed like what the bourbon industry, whiskey industry needs, is not more like straight cut ups. While this is like about having a good time, it's it's about like producing something that is meaningful, that is entertaining, that says something, that's helpful, that's educational in some regard. There's plenty of cut ups on here, on the YouTube, and there's definitely a place for that. Like I don't mean to knock that at all. Uh, but I also don't think that there's need for a lot more reviews. Like we have guys like Scott dropping reviews um, and you know, doing a great job and a better job than I could do on that. So that's not really what I want to do either. Um, is is really just like talk about whiskey and share it together, like and be a forum for that. Um, I think I think that's what people want. So you guys tell me. All right, super chats. Vice golf ball covered that. Appreciate the show so far. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate you guys dropping the super chats and supporting the channel. Thank you very much. Uh, what special edition makers was that? That was 2020. So this year's pretty good. Really chocolatey. One of the most chocolatey bourbons I've ever had. Uh, Trev Wilson says 101st Airborne. You can tell from the patch dog. Um. 101st Airborne, and that was the Band of Brothers one, right? Which that if you guys haven't seen Band of Brothers, oh my gosh, like so good, so good. You should definitely watch that. I will have to check with my dad. That's one of the things I should know, um, but I don't remember numbers super well. Vortex nine or 1988 is that Open 18? Yes, it is, and it is very good. I love Open in terms of Scotch distilleries. Open's my favorite. Are all the Four Roses single barrels the same? No. They are all different, and that's why I have them all. Is uh, you know, I'm, I think it'd be awesome to have all the recipes. I don't have them all, um, but I have them because I love them. And uh, I heard the price was going up, and so I kind of bought every one I saw. But then I don't open all my bottles. What I open, I try and drink. Like I don't want to be wasteful. I don't want to over collect. You know, there's different reasons why you would have a huge collection. Like initially, I would say I didn't want to over collect because. Um, you know, I didn't want to have too much money stored up in whiskey. Now that I have a YouTube channel and I've got a lot of people like engaging with the stuff then I might do, I, you know, I will probably have more open just so that I can share more about my thoughts of, you know, these things that I have with you squad. So, uh, Drew Lester, I trained my collection for years. 
<laughs> I didn't see any Maker's 46 cast strength. Have I had? I have not. I pa actually passed on it because I had this other Maker's, and I figured they might not be that different. And while I love the Maker's stuff, it's, it doesn't, like, blow my mind. I think it's really, really good, but it's not mind-blowing stuff. And I tend to crave rye uh, mash bills more than weeded, for the most part, at least. Um, so I don't want to have a whole ton of weeded on hand. So that's why I don't have the Maker's 46 cask. Could have. Didn't. I passed. Uh, sorry, guys. We're out of breath again. Do a little meditation break here. Uh, have I had any other Maker's Mark? Yeah, I did have standard Maker's 46. Had standard Maker's. Um, well, I tried last year's at a bar. Last year's special release. I love Maker's. Like, I think it's... And the brand is so cool. Like, I know they heavily, heavily protect that drippy red wax. Um which they should because it is literally the best like brand element in bourbon. A close second would be the new Rift Matte Black bottle. That is a really really cool bottle for sure. So that's the that's the bar tour. Uh, if you guys have any other questions about what's on my shelf, don't hesitate to hit me up. Um, I'm always uh, full of recommendations. I've got a lot of people reaching out to me now on Instagram, which is fun. And I would encourage you guys to do that. Like, if you get a great find, sh show me what you got. You know, I'd love to see it and celebrate with you. Um, and I'm also happy to pass along recommendations at any time. All right. The t-shirt. Let's talk about t shirt um, I mentioned ways you can support the channel. I'm not doing Patreon right now, and it's because I want to make sure if if I ask for your money, I can deliver something of value. If you guys want to support this through doing the little super chat stuff, um, that's great because you're watching the video. And so if you like it and want to support that way, awesome. Again, no pressure. If you want a dank t-shirt and you want to buy one of those, you can do that. Um, so this was the first mock-up I did. Um, I have made some improvements. The artwork will show up more vibrant on the print, new printing, um, and then it'll be up a little bit higher on the shirt. But you can actually pre-order these now. There's a link in the video description below. So when you're done, you can jump over. It's actually on an Etsy store right now until I can get my website up. But it's $18 plus shipping. When uh, the shirts come in, which is going to be probably right after Christmas, I'm going to up it to 22 to make sure that I can pay for stuff. Um, but I'm, those of you who are watching this vid and who've been following me since early on, I just wanted to make it a little bit easier if you wanted to get a shirt. Um, I ordered 50 of them, so super limited right now on those. But uh, when, when you're done watching, you can hit the link below, jump over, and grab a t-shirt if you want. And I'll get those out right after the new year. So they're being made right now, so it's just a graphic representation in that particular product. But I can guarantee that they are being made and they will ship out right after the new year. So those are ways you can support the channel. Super chat, buy a t-shirt, or if you want to support Stone Creek Coffee and our 130 employees in the middle of a pandemic, you can also go to stonecreekcoffee.com and use the code DrewPWhiskey to get really awesome coffee for 15% off and get free shipping. Uh, I think we're doing... I forget how long. I want to say January 15th, but just to be safe, why don't you do it before the end of the year if you need some coffee? I can take care of you guys. I know coffee, as I said. I know coffee. The best coffee. All right. Let's see what we got next here. We've been rocking for almost an hour now, and if you guys have questions, great. Ben said, did I get fat sizes? Great. That's an amazing question. I did, actually. Um... I got a, what we'll call a diversity of sizes. No judgment on the sizes whatsoever, Ben. Um, but I got a variety of sizes. But the Bourbon Junkies recommended if you're going to get apparel, get larger apparel. Which is fine because our demographic uh, as bourbon enthusiasts just tends to run a little bit larger. It stands to reason because um, we drink a lot of bourbon. So yes, I have medium through 2XL available on Etsy right now. Uh, Super Chat Mike, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate the support, dog. Uh, do you think rye is an acquired taste? Cheers. Um, sometimes. Like, for me, bourbon was an acquired taste. I liked scotch better. It was more mellow. Like, it was easier for my palate to kind of deal with. And I didn't have good bourbon for a dang long time. I started scotch on pretty good scotch. Like, that's how I got into it. I asked my dad, hey, dad, 
for Christmas, will you buy me a good scotch? And so I started with 15-year-old Glenlivet, which is pretty good. I started bourbon on standard bullet bourbon, and I was like, it's fine, but it's like, oh, man, it kind of it burns. <laughs> um, the I'll, t- I'll give you guys a little inside peek. I'm going to drop this in a video at some point, but, like, the life-changing whiskey I had was Booker's Rye. A friend brought that in. Uh, to work, we used to do whiskey Fridays, you know, wrap up the week by sharing some whiskey. And this guy, an amazing guy, um, just really generous spirit, super kind, really gracious, um, obviously, because he brought in Booker's Rye and he let me try just a little bit. And man, I was like, holy crap, like this is what American whiskey can be? Oh my word, like so sweet and intense and full. And I, you know, was barely into whiskey at the time. But that's what made me kind of switch over to American whiskey and be like, the intensity of the flavors here, beyond just pure heat, is like, I want that. I want more of that. And, uh, yeah, so is going back to the question, is it an acquired taste? It may be. Uh, it really depends on which ones you've had and which ones you haven't. There's a lot of bad rye, as there's a lot of bad bourbon, or not as good. We'll put it that way. So if you are like, ah, I'm not really into rye. Tell me which ones you've had, and I'll maybe make some other recommendations. Just Instagram direct message is probably the best way to chat with me. Dramhound. Good evening, everyone. Glad you decided to start live streaming. Hey, thanks. It's fun. I really enjoy this, just talking with you guys and interacting about whiskey. Super, super fun for me. Uh, All right. I still have some of this rare breed rye. So I'm open uh, to non-Super Chat questions if you guys want to drop anything in. Uh, Joseph says, Booker's Rye, it's all downhill from there. Yeah, it's hard to top <laughs> Booker's Rye for sure. Um, you know, it's sort of legendary, known as you know one of the greatest ryes ever. Um, so it's hard to top for sure, but we can keep trying. Yeah, I mean, that Rare Breed Rye is good. I like it. It's... Uh, not a very Christmassy rye, but very spicy. How many different Four Roses store picks do I have? Um, seven. Uh, that's the most hoarded whiskey I have. Again, not a super huge fan of hoarding. Um, but that one's more of a collecting one. Collecting's okay, you know. I don't really want to judge how people manage their whiskey. Like, they paid somebody for it. Like, it's not like they stole it. <laughs> It does make it harder for other people to get if you're hoarding. You know, if you got three cases of Henry McKenna, that's one of the reasons Henry McKenna is hard to find. It's not because it's amazing. It's good. It's not that it's amazing. Um, so, yeah, everything in moderation I'll come back to. But each one of these is a different pick, so I didn't clean somebody's picks out. Uh, also, how, how does Open 18 compared to Open 14? Very similar and a little bit better. Is it worth the money? I got my Oban 18 for $70, which is really good deal. Like Oban 14 is $70. So a grocery store near me will periodically put um, their scotches on sale, sometimes like majorly on sale. So if I buy scotches, it tends to be there. That's for those of you who want to know in the Milwaukee area, Sendix. You should check Sendix periodically because you might get Lagavulin in it, $50 pretty rad rod when will we have a pipe with bourbon you tell me dog when do you want to have a pipe with bourbon um i need to find my pipe it's been a while since i piped it up but that sounds great austin Feltz, have you sipped knob creek rye yes love knob creek rye that's a great everyday rye probably my favorite everyday rye it's got enough age on it like it's big round intense not grainy uh oaky spicy mild on the herbs like it's rare well i would need to do a side by side of rare breed rye and knob creek to compare going on taste or talking about taste from memory can be tough um but yeah knob creek rye awesome good stuff four roses video would be cool i will definitely do one you know that elijah craig video i did um that was a lot of fun to do everything you need to know about elijah craig I think I called it What's the Deal with Elijah Craig. I did that with uh, Henry McKenna, too. I really enjoy those. Very informative, educational, um, just breaking down why something is hyped or, you know, what 
what's the story behind the brand. I will definitely do that with more distilleries and uh, like brand lines. It's a lot of fun for me. So definitely going to talk about Four Roses because I'm obviously a Four Roses fan. Uh, Magoo, 1500, just dropped a fiver. Thanks, Magoo. Preach. I really appreciate that. Uh, Vortex 98. I'm not judging on the Four Roses picks you have. I have through myself just wondering. Yeah, no no problem. Not an issue. I guess I'm sensitive. <laughs> to, like, well, people might be judging me. I'm not really worried about it because this is purely just for fun. So if somebody was like, man, you suck. What's with your collection? It's like, well, you know, like to each their own. I'm just doing this for fun. So if you want to get on somebody's YouTube channel and just light them up for how they live their life, that's on you, dog. <laughs> and I don't think you're doing that, so... Um, I do want, I like want to help people understand why I do what I do. Like I have no problem explaining myself though. Uh, Sean Murphy thoughts on high West distillery. I know you mentioned, uh, the midwinter night's dram in a recent video. Yes. Um, so Burrai, great, uh, midwinter night's dram. Great. The other stuff is kind of meh. Um, I was in the bourbon junkies video chatted about that with, um, Sean, Dan, Dan, Dan's on the left, Sean's on the right. Dan, um, because he's a big High West fan. Uh, The High West brand is really cool. Their spot in Utah, Park City, Utah, is really cool. I've been there. I stumbled on it, actually. Uh, So I need to actually try more. Dan was telling me on that live stream, which you should watch. It was fun, a lot of fun for sure. Um, He was telling me that their new finished stuff, their barrel picks, is really good, and I've not had one yet because... I've got so much whiskey here. <laughs> I want to taste all these things, but like, what am I going to do with it all? Well, share it, obviously. I cannot wait. Let me tell you guys, I cannot wait for vaccine to come into effect and for COVID to be kind of over. We're not getting into politics here. Again, I, you know, I want to keep things positive, but I am such a social person that I, you know, I love doing this because I feel like it's social. Like getting to sort of meet you guys and talk about whiskey is amazing. Um, and not being able to host whiskey nights, which I love to do and have 20 people down here in the basement and just sip whiskey. I miss that so much. So, um, anyway, uh, those were always occasions to like break out whiskeys and try them and taste them totally like derailed. But Tim Evans, have you been to Jay Henry? Yes. Super cool. And I met Mrs. Henry and I, dang it, I forget her name, but uh, amazing woman, super gracious and kind, um, and I love their product. Really solid stuff. Jay Henry out of Wisconsin, North Madison. A robotic. I used to liberally drink Intelligentsia Ethiopia Yurgishev. Intelligentsia is a great coffee brand. Uh, any like-minded coffees I should be searching for? Well, you know, you got to get those Ethiopians when they're fresh from origin. I can tell you we are getting a Kenyan at Stone Creek Coffee. I'm, I'm fiercely loyal to my company, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, Stone Creek Coffee is going to launch a Kenyan coffee. We're calling it Sunbird um, in January, and that will be quite quite good. And then in January as well, we're launching a Colombian coffee that's a 200-hour anaerobic fermentation um natural process so we're calling it 200 hour supernatural that will be really rad so if you are interested in that go check out stone creek coffee again you can follow them us on instagram i actually run that instagram account and uh you'll definitely get all the deets you need on amazing coffee for sure if i was going to recommend other companies um king state out of florida tampa florida uh, really big fan of their brand and then black and white out of North Carolina. Um, Kyle Ramage is a bourbon geek like us and, uh, he is one of the co-owners over there. So cool companies, both John white, oh, man, I keep scrolling through the comments and then it like skips to the bottom. That's frustrating. Just ordered a shirt, John. Thanks dog. Appreciate that. I will get it out as quick as I dang can. Austin Feltz. Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof ride just hit Wisconsin. Have you seen it yet? No, I have not. I stopped at Otto's earlier and I try and stop, you know, probably five different liquor stores a week on average just to see. And, you know, I get lucky very rarely, but I kind of stay up with what's new and was able to score plenty of toasted barrel that way. 
but I've been hearing amazing things about that Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rye, so I'm definitely going to try that. So again, I'm just looking, I'm probably skipped a lot of questions if you guys haven't tagged me just because there's so much uh, chatter, chatter in the chat, which is great. Glad you guys are enjoying yourselves. Rod, do you think rye, rare, rare, rare bird, rye, rare bird will become out? Rare breed rye will become a household product. Um, probably more than it is now, I would imagine. Like, it doesn't seem. They don't say limited release on this. Uh, so I do think it will probably be more widely distributed, but that's total speculation. I don't have Eddie Russell on speed dial <laughs> or Bruce. Hey, hey, Jimmy! 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 Where's the, where's the rare bird rye? Rare breed rye. Yeah, I don't have the, those guys up on my speed dial. Um, maybe one day. That would be pretty dope. Bottom line is I do expect it will be more widely distributed, and uh, you should probably pop it because it's pretty good. Tommy D, have you tried Ledger Rock Distillery out of Fond du Lac? Dude, I've never heard of Ledger Rock. And there's a, actually a growing number of distilleries in Wisconsin, and there are quite a few I have not tried. I tend to, tr like, I prioritize the ones I hear really good things about. So if somebody's, like, telling me, yo, dog, I think this whiskey's really good, I'm like, oh, cool, then I'm probably going to try that one. I don't often just go buy something I never heard of, because, again, there's only so much we can drink. Our livers will only handle so much. Terrence McDowell, your top three Stone Creek coffees. Kyle Ramage, same question. Kyle has probably not had that many Stone Creek coffees. Is Kyle in the chat? It would be pretty rad if he were. Oh, he is. Dude, what's up? Uh, yeah, glad you made it. Um, my top three Stone Creek coffees. Um, it depends on what you like. Like I, I, I mean, of course I have my preferences. I'm just finishing up my bag of the geisha natural that we launched but it's sold out now um, we have a peruvian coffee and peruvians tend to be kind of earthy not my absolute favorite but we have one right now called switchback um, and that's really good that's a light roast then we have another light roast um, which is a rwandan coffee we call it passion fruit and we take a kind of interesting naming methodology with our coffees but those two are our small batch light roasted you know, very small sourcing. We only buy a little bit of, it, of this really good coffee to sell. Um, those are both great. If you like something dark roasted, our Three Volcanoes Dark Guatemala, I think, is the best dark roast ever. Um, our, also, our espresso blend, like our classic espresso blend, is a medium roast called Green Bike, also super good. And you can brew that as standard coffee, and I don't know anybody who doesn't like that. I had an Americano with that this morning, and it, it did me right. Uh, Tommy D, it's young but drinkable. That Ledger Rock. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> if you, if it's drinkable, it's drinkable. Like, well, I want to want to drink it, you know. <laughs> like, I want it to be pleasurable. <clears throat> Johnny L, Three Boys Farm Distillery south of Frankfort, Kentucky. If you're ever in the area, definitely worth the stop. Hey, thanks. Appreciate the recommendation. Andrew didn't tag me, but I see a question here. Andrew Swallows, since we know you're a fan of James Hoffman, did you participate in the world's largest coffee tasting? I did not. Um, I was probably working, probably tasting coffee, not with James. Um, but it would have been fun. Terrence McDonald, Droopy Whiskey, sounds like Geisha, Three Volcanoes, and Green Bike are headed to Atlanta. Did somebody order some? Did Kyle order some? I don't know. All right, let's kill this rare bird, rare breed. Good grief. I was talking about Dave at Rare Bird 101. Now I can't say rare breed without saying rare bird. It's tough. That's a good question, Vortex. What's my favorite non-allocated bourbon? You know, Eagle Rare, that's allocated. I really like Eagle Rare. Non-allocated. A total sleeper, which I mentioned in one of my videos, uh, and I have to, I always have to qualify this because I don't really support the Bullet brand, but Bullet 10 is 10 year Four Roses, and it's really, really good. Um, four Roses single barrel, though, that's what I'm going to come down to. The 100 proof, it's basically eight years, Four Roses single barrel product, that's got to definitely take the cake for me. You can pretty much find it anywhere. It's amazing, so...
Four Roses Single Barrel is the winner for favorite non-allocated bourbon. You heard it here first. Okay, I'm going to leave these glasses. I'll come back to that. Which one did I start with the rat? Okay, I'm going to pour this next one over my first rare breed drops because I don't want to do more dishes. So a guy named JD sent me this Doc Swinson's. It's a Tennessee rye, aged in rum, 90 proof. So, JD, dude, thank you. I appreciate this. And I'm I'm bringing that drink curious essence to this. Like, I have no preconceptions. I didn't know the brand, Doc Swenson's. I did look it up, did a little bit of reading, um, but I don't even remember where it's from. Distilled in Tennessee, finished and bottled by Distiller's Way, uh, LLC, Ferndale, Washington. Well, Washington's a beautiful state, so maybe they make beautiful whiskey. So, you guys get double bottle pops today. Wow, I'm getting tagged all over the place. Is Stone Creek ever getting some Yemenia, Yemen-based coffee? I will rule nothing out. We don't currently have any obligations to buy Yemenese coffee. Uh, Yemen is an interesting coffee story, actually. We don't have tons of time. I, I don't want to only talk about coffee guys <laughs> for the peeps that showed up to talk about whiskey although i appreciate the coffee questions um but definitely hit me up with any questions you have on my instagram uh dms slide into my dms dog. all right we'll talk about this as we go antonio says four roses over old forester 1920 for me for my palate, yes. Old Forester 1920 is very, very good. But if I had to pick one of the two, I would go Four Roses Single Barrel. I also like the price point better on that. 40 bucks versus 60 bucks. Carlos, are all Bellmead Reserves worth the buy? The ones I've had, yes. Um, if it's less than $80. Less than 70 I haven't paid more than 70 for a Bellmead Reserve. And I really like them. Cameron, did Stone Creek get any coffee from the Yemen auction? No, we did not. Keith, do you have any Old Forester in your bar? Did I miss it? I actually do not. I love Statesman. I love 1920. I'm currently on the Prowl. <laughs> Otto's apparently re released the uh, barrel strength uh, single barrel pick they did like yesterday. But I have not been able to get one yet, um, but I may have a friend helping me score one. So. Um, I'm a busy guy, you know, I got, I work full day and then I got to get home to my kids. So I was not able to run and get one yet, but hopefully I will have a old forester bell, barrel strength pick on my shelf next video. Uh, I would love birthday bourbon though, that, that and the president select, uh, but I've never tried either one. Like I've never gotten close to a birthday bourbon. There is actually, uh, uh, <clears throat> What do you call it? A raffle. Not a raffle. Just a whatever. Lottery. Gosh. A lottery happening at the liquor store down the road from me where they have a bottle of birthday bourbon, but I have zero like hope in actually getting it. Deminer, Demoner. Ooh, one. <laughs> what are those four roses up top? That's a 2015 and 2020 LEs. LE small batch. I think I saw one at my local liquor store. You may have seen... It if you saw one of these at your local liquor store without the sticker on it, get it. You may have seen classic small batch. You may have seen the small batch select, uh, which the small batch select is very good. Um, worth trying for sure if you haven't. But um, you may not have seen the LEs. The LEs are probably worth buying up to $225, $250. Secondary price on those is anywhere from $350 to $500. So I... Not that I advocate buying on the secondary market. I do not. Um, but you do, you dog. Antonio, thoughts on Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered? Funny you should mention that. That came up a couple of times. This is a... Like, this bourbon is getting all kinds of uh, accolades right now. But I've not been able to try it. It's not distributed in Wisconsin right now. But I did have one of you swell peeps reach out and send me a sample. So, on Instagram this week, I will taste smoke wagon uncut unfiltered so thank you if you guys want to send me samples that's actually another way you can support the channel um i appreciate it like just anything you guys do really i appreciate because it's totally not uh, uh 
not necessary. Steve Hawthorne of Hawthorne Coffee. Is that the Steve Hawthorne that's on the on the channel right now, Steve? Would we actually have, we have worked in the coffee industry together in Milwaukee for now, as long as I've been in coffee, I think, if that's the Steve. And we've never met, so we should meet, Steve. Should, we should have a bourbon, for sure. Cameron, thanks for answering all the questions. Dude, this is just fun. It's talking about whiskey. <laughs> I could literally stay on here all night, except for the fact that I haven't slept well this week because my kids, our kids, you know, do what they do. Keith Schmidt, try the old Forester Barrel Proof Store pick before you buy it. They usually drink very hot. I did taste one. It was very hot, and I don't like mine. <laughs> um, that's okay. You can always proof it down, right? Just add a little water, and then you've got an old Forester 90 proof, and that's fine. It'll just stretch it a little bit longer. The bottles look cool with that light blue. Uh, Sam Houston, 14, caught my attention. Yes, based on its reputation, uh, but I've never had it. Steve Hawthorne. Yep, it is the Steve Hawthorne. So, Steve, thanks for joining the channel tonight, man. Appreciate that. We should get together and have a chat. Uh, Vortex. How does Open 18 compare to Open 14? I mentioned that a little bit earlier. Open 18 is quite good. Um, A little bit more deep and rich. A little bit more age influence than the 14. Um, A little bit better. Probably not $80 better. um, But if you can get a good deal on Open 18, it's really fantastic. All right, let's talk about this Doc Swinson's um, rum finished rye. You know, the other pre- prevalent, predominant uh, rum finished rye that's out there right now is the Angel's Envy rum finished rye, which I've not had. So. There's a lot I haven't had. Sorry, guys. I had a rum finished Jefferson's, which I did not like. This is actually really good, guys. The rum is evident on the nose. Um, and it seems a little rum heavy, a little like light grain, seems young, but then you taste it. Rum sweetness hits you, boom, in the front. Then it gets really spicy, and that's the part I really like, that rum into rice spice. The finish is not great. Finish is like Cheerios, and not like Honey Nut Cheerios. It's like grainy Cheerios, OB. Um, but it's good up until then. So this may be a good candidate for finishing with a little red wine, that that midwinter night's dram kind of hack, or you know a little port. Um, but it's it's not bad, uh, and I say that having spent nothing for it. So again, I appreciate the gift. That's very gracious. Um, you know the whiskey community is very kind. Um, really thankful. So very nice gift, and I'll enjoy this. I think. As I'm in the mood for it. It's, you know, it's not an everyday whiskey for me, but it's fun. Kyle Pelham. Got a Old Forester Barrel Proof store pick from Woodman's. It was hot. Still enjoyed it a lot. That was actually the one I tried, Kyle. Just depends on what you want. I mean, I do like a hot whiskey sometimes. I oscillate. And that's uh, that's why it's so hard for me to pick out a favorite whiskey. It's sometimes I really want something that's going to punch me in the freaking face. Mondays will do that to you. Um, other times I want something that's just really chill. And that's why well, I go to Eagle Rare in those moments. I really love the toasted marshmallow, cherry, dark chocolate, you know, light oak of Eagle Rare. That's my everyday low-proof bourbon, if I could actually get it every day. But, again, distribution of Eagle Rare is really light in Wisconsin. Vortex, how easy is it for you to find well there? Excuse me, guys. That one got me. How easy is it for you to find Weller 107? Uh, Not easy at all. (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) The only one I found was at a restaurant that sold bottles and they wanted 125 for it, so I passed. Good call. You shouldn't spend $125 for Weller 107. It's very difficult. It is not distributed widely in Wisconsin. I have some family in Ohio, extended family, and family in Texas that I have on the prowl for me. Tommy D. Suggestions. Get the 46 cask. Um, okay. <laughs> 111 Chattanooga. I really want to try Chattanooga. Again, not distributed in Wisconsin, but I've heard great things about Chattanooga, Chattanooga whiskey, especially the 111. Jack Daniels single barrel. I have had Jack Daniels uh, barrel proof single barrel 
and I've heard, you know, it varies because it's a single barrel. The one I had was not amazing. <coughs> I will undoubtedly go back to it at some point. Um, and then Smoke Wagon. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try that Smoke Wagon later in the week. So follow me, Drew P. Whiskey, on Instagram. We'll talk Smoke Wagon later in the week. All right. Well, how far are we in? We're an hour and 20 in. I've had a few whiskeys. Feeling pretty good. Pretty tough. But I covered my agenda. I don't want to bore you guys at all. At all. Here. Let me see what else we got. Well, I'll just hit you guys with some reminders. Again, thank you for those of you who have super chatted. You know, that's just pure grace on your part. And so I'm thankful for that. Um, You know, coming up next week, we're going to drop that, you know, if you only had five bourbons in your collection what would they be that's the video i'm going to do next week and then i think we're going to spend more time talking about in the live stream next week just what do i want the droopy whiskey channel to be um i have just been doing a lot of thinking about this because it's purely a passion project obviously like nobody gets into whiskey youtube and they're like i'm gonna make a living doing youtube that's is probably a good way to make crappy content um but I, I continue to be floored, and you know I think at one point we had like 140 people on here tonight. That's amazing, and so I'm just thankful for you guys sort of rallying around the the ethos. And you know I want to just be clear that yeah I want this to be about having fun and being kind and and developing a community that's like genuinely caring. Um, you know if you're on the Facebook forums, you guys know how people can be and how judgmental. They are. They can be uh, depending on what you buy, how you buy, how you drink. And it's because we can say anything on social media, like literally anything, and there's no consequences for it. But that's kind of part of what's wrong with the world. Not social media, but this I can do anything and it doesn't have consequences. And I've been guilty of that myself. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, definitely don't want to be self righteous here. I have said things on social media that are like, dude, you shouldn't have done that. That was stupid. <laughs> you're, a, you're a young butthole. Like, yeah. And sometimes I've been a butthole. And, but I don't want to do that. And, and you know, more and more as I get older and as I, as I have my kids, I want to do things that, <laughs> even if they're fun, like just a whiskey channel, it's redeemable. Like, it's something that I can look back on and be like, wow, I'm proud of that. You know, I'm proud of, you know, the disposition. Um, with which I held myself and, you know, the friends I was able to make. Um, and again, you guys have been fantastic. So I'm just really thankful to make some new connections and have a good time. Uh, so we'll get more into that stuff and like you, some of the vision I have for the channel, uh, given that you guys seem to like this stuff. I will say I do plan to make a Kentucky trip in January to kind of advance the vision a little bit. Uh, so I have some plans down in Kentucky that hopefully I'll be able to flesh out before baby comes and maybe be able to deliver some pretty killer content uh, for you guys here in the next couple of months. So definitely stay tuned. If you guys are watching the video and you haven't already, I'd appreciate a like, no pressure, or subscribe if you want to stay in touch. We'll be back live again next Thursday at 8 o'clock. And then Mondays, uh, you know, between 10 and 11 usually, I will host a video premiere of the produced video for that week. And again, that's going to be the five bourbons you kind of have to have in a basic collection that's the full agenda tonight i'm gonna hang out here for a few more minutes um so if you guys have questions want to chat etc happy to do that as long as you you guys want to hang on all right a lot of a lot of tags here so thanks for that Keith Schmidt, Drew P. Whiskey, are you going live next week yeah it's christmas eve on thursday <laughs> keith dude thank you for that Um, My kids go to bed early, um, so yeah, I probably will. If you guys want to have whiskey chats on Christmas Eve, totally down. My recommendation is you check by your significant other first, and maybe they like to watch whiskey videos too. Maybe uh, we'll talk more about coffee and make it, you know, very uh, accessible to anybody who is... I mean, I can talk about coffee, I can talk about hunting, I can talk about golf, coffee, whiskey, I already said those things. What else can I talk about? I'm kind of a jack of very few trades, master of a very few trades. Anyway, I'm trying to make it accessible. Tom Lynch, hold on. What night next week for the stream? Thursdays. I'm going to shoot for Thursdays at 8. I'm going to try and hold that. I won't be able to do it every week, but that's what we're shooting for. Tommy D, 
Just keep it real. Definitely don't root for the Packers. Sorry, dog. Dude, I live in Milwaukee. What do you want from me? I grew up as a Cowboys fan, actually. Loved the Cowboys. Um, you know, my very first memories of watching football were the Cowboys dynasty of the early 90s. Um, but then I moved to Wisconsin. And you can't really, I mean, you can live here and not be a Packers fan, but why would you? So I do root for the Packers. I haven't watched a single football game this year, though. COVID is weird. Like, watching football without crowds. Watching golf without crowds is hard. Watching football without crowds is just ominous. It's weird. Uh, Andrew Swallows. Love the vibe of the channel. Keep up the good work. Thanks, dog. Lone Wanderer. People like you as much as your content, so don't worry if your live chats flow outside of Just Whiskey. Hey, thanks, man. That's very kind. Uh, you're first. Love the neat nation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fun thing. So, uh, you know, if you guys like the channel, that's the tagline I use. Uh, so keep it neat. And then, uh, if you're a subscriber, consider yourself a certified part of neat nation. Sean Murphy. Well done show tonight. Looking forward to what's next. Thanks, dude. Heading out. Yeah. Peace. I mean, if you're in Eastern time right now, it's getting late and you probably had a few. So it's probably bedtime. Luckily, I don't have a significant other. This is from Cameron. So lots of times, lots of time, which is why I went down the whiskey rabbit hole. There are worse things you could do, no doubt. Rod Spina, you rock big time, bro. Simply thanks for being you, dude. Uh, thanks. Uh, God's grace. That's my opinion. Uh, there are many things about me that are probably not so great, but I do believe in God's grace. Eric Sawyer, those are all great hobbies and great taste. Thanks, dog. Tommy D, go Bears. I'm not a militant Packers fan. I root for the Packers. I'm not militant at all. Scott Tyson, saw you on Junkies. Dude, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Very kind. Uh, love your approach to whiskey and coffee. Just got an AeroPress to try the Geisha and Tabby I brought from your store. Scott, you're a hero. I hope you enjoy that coffee. Vortex98, uh, better the Packers than the Bears. The Bears are going to give me an aneurysm. Yes, the Bears still suck. <laughs> Keith Schmidt, uh, Trev Wilson, you should invite Drew P. Whiskey on one of your lives. I'm sure Trev and I have like been to ships passing in the night, and he's moderating for me, so thanks, Trev, for doing that. Um, so we should connect. There are many people, like the whiskey community around Wisconsin, like the hobbyists, they're, there's a lot. Um, so there are a lot of people I just simply don't know um, because I tend to like ob over obligate myself. I'm always busy, um, so I'm not always able to make the social functions. But I really wanna, I really wanna do that post COVID because I haven't done jack since March, and I'm really shut down right now because my wife, when she gets sick, she runs a really high fever, and so like even if it was just like the flu was really bad, I wouldn't be socializing a lot because the last thing I want is my wife to run a really high fever. When she's pregnant, so that would not be good. Not be good. All right. Squad, I'm going to go just like three more minutes here. So any parting questions while I finish this pretty awesome rare breed ride? JD says, wife says her new box of Stone Creek coffee smells like heaven. Rock on. Fred says, keep it going. You want me to keep it going and talk? I can talk. I'm, I have a gift for speaking without saying anything. But I need questions. I need fuel. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll wrap it up. At some point, I got to go upstairs and like go to sleep. Because my daughter in particular has uh, not slept well the last few nights. So I use it. I love this uh this band it's a whoop band and it's, it's about tracking sleep and recovery it's been helpful for just like my personal health and well-being to like really be mindful of my sleep habits um but yeah i haven't slept well this week so my recovery scores have been in the crapper thanks for the stream do you bow hunt favorite whiskey to take with you while hunting i have not been able to hunt nearly so much as i would like to up in wisconsin i actually don't have a place to go uh, there's not a big hunting community and specialty coffee, which is fine. It's each their own. Uh, so it's been years, actually, since I've been out. And I never bow hunted because in Texas, the rifle season is two months long. You don't have to bow hunt. Super cool, though. Like, I loved watching bow hunting when I was really into hunting back in Texas. So 
would love to try that one day. Terrence, 35 pound dumbbells are cool to talk about too. <laughs> home gyms, home bars make perfect pairings. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so the earn your bourbon, I'm sort of on the earn your bourbon sh- train. Like everything in moderation, work out, stay healthy, you know, be a healthy person and don't over drink. Like drink, have fun, enjoy yourself, but just be wise. Uh, dependent on nothing. Kyle, droopy whiskey, whoop band, spoken like a true golfer. <laughs> yeah, whoop in golf. Yeah, it's been been a, a whole big thing, no doubt. Uh, you don't have an infinity bottle. I do not. That would be a fun video, though. I want to talk about blends. Like an infinity bottle seems like I'd rather not do that. I'd rather take the bottles I have left and actually like create intentional blends with them. I'm more interested in doing that than an infinity bottle choice for nightcap whiskey totally depends on the night ben totally depends on the night all right squad that's it i'm done donezo so i'm gonna go have a nightcap with my wife and sit for a while and eat some chips These chips to me are the perfect post whiskey food so thank you all for watching all 100 plus of you it's been a lot of fun um tune in again monday at whatever time probably 11 is when i'll do that premiere again monday at 11 we'll do a premiere and then we'll go live again next thursday uh if you wanted to pick up one of those keep it neat shirts i know some of you were waiting for those just hit the link below i think i dropped the link in there i'm, I'm gonna keep, oh yeah it's there so the shirt in the a uh show description below you can pick that up. It's going to be 18 until the shirts actually come in. Then it's going to jump up to 22, but it's not going to be in, in time for Christmas. So you're going to get it like after the new year. So sorry about that, but is what it is. Um, and then don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Droopy Whiskey because I'll drop some little bits of content and little tastings for you throughout the week. You can keep up with me that way. But again, thanks, y'all. I will catch you on the flip-flop. <laughs>